Maybe seated. <coughs> So as I mentioned uh, this morning, we are spending some time in preparation for the Lord's Supper. And so before we dive too far into that, let us listen to the words of Scripture from Psalm 55. These are selected verses for us to hear this morning. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and the storm. And then let us also hear the words of John chapter 6, verses 16 to 21. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into a boat and set off the, across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. And then, brothers and sisters, lastly, let us turn back to Psalm 55, verse 22, in which we read, Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. The word of the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when we come to communion, we are coming in our storms and in our troubles, in the waters that are rough, in the, the situations from which we long to flee. Even, even if we think that all is good in our lives, the reality the Bible tells us is that we, apart from God, are in deep, deep trouble. We are our own storm-tossed seas. We are our own terror and horror. And of course, to add on to that, Satan loves to just make it worse if he can. Adding on temptation after temptation and guilt after guilt until we are almost drowning. We are full of fear and trembling and the terrors of death have fallen on us. Brothers and sisters, that can seem all the more poignant and true right now. We, we, are, we, we hope we are just coming to the end of two years of pandemic and restrictions, and we are so tired and frustrated, and we have been longing for normalcy. And just, just as we're hopefully coming to the end of that, we have a nuclear state going to war against the sovereign country. And this morning we hear that President Putin has put his nuclear deterrence on their highest state of alert. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Reminds me of the days when I was a child, and many of you will remember too, when, 
when my parents were concerned about nuclear war and we watched special movies that would highlight the realities of what would happen in a post-apocalyptic nuclear war. <laughs> uh, it's a world full of terrors. And of course... Ukraine and Russia are not, by any means, the only countries involved in armed conflict. In fact, though North America knew a relative amount of peace, the 20th century was the most war-filled century in human history. And the 21st century doesn't appear to be heading in a better direction. And again, we remember the war that is within ourselves. And so what does the Lord's Supper have to do with all that? Conflict within and conflict without? Well, it has everything to do with it. Because the reality is that humanity and this planet have been under siege, have been under attack, have been... <laughs> under the thumb of an evil dictator right since Adam and Eve made their choices in the garden. This world and humanity is one big war zone. And yet, and yet even though we were part of the enemy forces, we willingly, together with Adam and Eve, joined forces with the, the rebels of Satan and his minions. Even though we joined on his side, God did not abandon us. No, indeed, right from the beginning, God had a plan. God said to Adam and Eve, God said that, that Eve's offspring that the serpent would bite his heel, but that he would crush the serpent's head. And brothers and sisters, that, the central event, the central event in the war for humanity and for this earth is Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. That is the point on which the whole war turned. And when we come to the Lord's Supper, that is what we come to commemorate, to celebrate, to work through. For in that time, we partake of Christ's body and blood. We remember that He sacrificed everything for us. So that He might pull us from the enemy ranks into His embrace as His children, as His brothers and sisters. So that no longer will the storms overcome us. No longer are we destined to die and remain forever in the clutches of Satan. But instead, we are welcomed as if we were fully clean. Indeed, through Jesus, we are fully clean. Through Jesus, the psalmist can say, <laughs> he can say to us, cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Why? Not because He Himself was perfectly righteous. No, the psalmist knew very well that He Himself apart from God, was destined for death and terror and horror. He Himself pled with God. Brothers and sisters, 
whether we come worried about the conflict external to us in this world, or whether we come worried about the conflict within ourselves, regardless of whether it's one or the other or both that is weighing us down, we come to the Lord's table and we see And we know the comfort that though the battle rages on, the victory is secure. This week, brothers and sisters, don't close your eyes to the conflict within yourself. Do not stopper your ears to the conflict in the world around us. Take it in. See the waves and the storm and give it to God. Remember that the victory is His. Repent of what you need to repent of. Make right what needs to be made right. And come next week ready to receive the victory feast of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father in Heaven, today and in all days we cast our cares on You. Lord, we hear Your Scriptures that if we do so, and as we do so, You will sustain us and that You will never let Your righteous be shaken. Like the disciples in the boat, we tremble with fear at the waves and the wind and we tremble with fear at You, our God, walking on the water above the storm and the tumult. We are afraid both of the death that surrounds us and of the holiness and awesomeness of Your Son, Jesus. And yet, and yet, O God, in the conflict between the things of this earth, the troubles that seek to overwhelm us, and the power of Your love and might and righteousness and holiness and mercy and grace, there is no contest. And the victory is sure for You, O God, have always been, will always be, the victor. And so, Lord, come on to our boat, the boat of our souls, the boat of our bodies, our hearts and minds, the boat of this world. Please, O God, come into this conflict and still the storm. Bring us through the storm miraculously in Your power. And even as we say that, O Lord, even as we cry out for that, we know, O God, that it is already done. That already we have been saved. That already Your Son has won our victory for us. Lord God, Jesus, our Mediator. There there are these moments when Your greatness breaks through our our prayers and and piety and it it almost unhinges us. We see You for who You really are. And we want to get away from You in our fear. But You, O God, who are greater than all our fears, greater than the storms, greater than our temptations, greater than our failures, greater than our enemies, You, O God, keep coming near. Gentle Savior, 
please over this week and as we come to your table and throughout our lives, draw our unsettled heart with your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll invite the praise team to come forward and lead us again in song, starting with Light of the World, for that is who our Savior is, the light of